The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning or afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'm the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. I'd like to welcome everybody to the webinar today. Today's webinar is on the Chapter website. So this is for Chapter Webmasters or people that are interested in becoming Chapter Webmasters. Um, to show you a little bit about what the chapter websites are, how to access them, where they're located, and how to go in and start to do some preliminary editing. So it is a very easy process to do, and we're going to go over how to do some of that stuff. A couple of housekeeping things before we get started. This is a live webinar, so that means that if you have any questions as we're going through any of the material today, please do feel free to ask those questions as we're going through. The best way to do that is to type into the questions panel in this GoToWebinar software, and I will see those questions pop up on the screen, and I'll be able to answer them as we're going through the material. I do try to keep these webinars to 30 minutes, so we can all get back to our busy days and our busy schedules. That being said, I love questions, and if you have any questions, I will stay on these calls until all of the questions are answered. The webinar is also being recorded, so if we if you'd like to review it later, or if you'd like to share this recording with anybody else from your chapter or from your region, you're welcome to do so. You'll be able to access the recording in a couple of different ways. The first of which is if you click on this question mark in the upper right-hand corner of BNI Connect, that will take you to the support site. And on the support site, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see all of our upcoming webinars. So we have a full slate for next month as well. But in the chapter, uh, chapter training and documentation section, you'll see recorded webinars. There we have all the recorded webinars on a month-by-month -month basis, so that you can click through and look at the webinars for any particular month. So you can review them, play them here, you can view them full screen, or you can go over to our YouTube site. Our YouTube site is youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. And aside from just the recorded webinars, we have hundreds of videos up here. Some special announcements from Dr. Meisner. We have some three-minute educational moment videos that you're welcome to use at your chapters as well. Some release announcements and updates and all sorts of things up here on our YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and get started. And we have the chapter website. So one thing you may or may not know is that every single chapter in BNI Connect has their very own chapter web page that's tied to their regional website. So what do these web pages look like? So I'm going to go up to uh, one of our regional sites, and this is our test region, AntarcticReferrals.com. This is our cold region way up there. And if I go, and let's say I'm going to Antarctica and I'm going to look for a chapter, I can view the chapters in the area. And let's say, oh yeah, here we go, the Frosty 5 chapter. I want to take a look at that chapter. I can click there. I can see all the members, but I can also view the chapter website. Now, this is a default, out-of-the-box chapter website. Um, without doing anything at all to the chapter, it does list a bunch of information on there. So you have the amount of money that your chapter's passed, a brief description of BNI and what the chapter is, a stock photography picture here. Um, if this chapter did have the leadership team, they would be listed over here on the left automatically. Um, it also lists the location that the chapter meets, the member count, who the director consultant is, what day and time they meet, an opportunity to click and go to visit that chapter. You can click through and see all the chapter members and click to their profiles. Um, Frosty the Snowman hasn't quite filled out his profile yet, but you can get through to all of that information. Now, some of this information, as I said on the left, is pulled automatically from BNI Connect, but it does give you the opportunity to go through and do some custom things to your page as well. So all of the text that's in the middle of the page can all be customized. You can put graphics up here. You can put pictures up here. Um, there is a chapter news functionality that's here that you can add to. There's also one additional page called a chapter gallery that you can make amendments to and use that as an additional page as well. Now, some, re some chapters have done some more things with this. Um, if I go to my own particular chapters website, I am a member here in the Rhode Island region. Uh, this one has done some additional 
modifications to the page, but not a whole lot. So we've kept the text here the same and the picture here the same, but we have added a Facebook link here. So you can go to our Facebook page as well. You can see that our leadership team is listed here on this one. We also have our chapter speakers. So as long as your secretary treasurer is entering speakers into the system, your chapter speakers will appear on the chapter website as well. Now there are some chapters that have done some amazing things with their chapter websites. Here's a chapter um, that's in the California area, in the San Francisco area, called the Golden Ideas chapter. You can see that they've done a lot of customizations to theirs. They've added a graphic with a picture of their location. They have a button for I'd like to visit. There's a special message from their chapter president. It also has their speakers listed. They've done some things on the right-hand side here to let them know what professionals they're looking for. And if I click on their chapter members and power teams, they've done some customizations here as well. So if you want to view their chapter by the power teams and contact spheres, you could click there. It'll show you their power teams, the real estate power team, the health and fitness, and these are all things that can be done with a little bit of work to the chapter websites. So let's take a look in the system. How do we access these chapter websites and how do we make changes to um, your chapter page? Now to access these, you do have to log in to BNI Connect. You'll log into BNI Connect and get to your home screen. Now you do need to be designated as a chapter webmaster. So by default, the leadership team will have access to this, so the president, the vice president, the secretary, treasurer, but other members of the chapter would need to be designated as a chapter webmaster. To do that, please contact your regional office, so your executive director or your director consultant, and they can make these assignments for you. Once you're given the assignment, you will now see a tools menu. And under the tools menu, you'll see CMS. That stands for Content Management System. You would then click on Chapter Websites. Once we get into the Chapter website screen, you'll see all of the Chapter websites that you have access to. Um, in most cases, you'll just see one Chapter website listed here. So, for example, if I only had access to the Frosty 5 chapter, I would just see this one chapter listed. It'll show us the link to the domain, so if I clicked on that, it would bring us over to the page. And there's also an Edit button over here on the right-hand side. So if I click on the Edit button, this will take us into the CMS for that particular chapter page. The first page is going to have all the pages of the website and different options. I'll come back to those options a little bit later. Down at the bottom, you'll see the preview URL and the live URL. For those of you that might be unfamiliar with editing websites, when you're working on the website, you'll always be working on a copy of the website, kind of like a draft document, if you will. And you can see all of those changes that you're making as you're making them on the preview site. In order to make those changes go live, we do need to publish those changes. So let's say you're working on it, you're changing some text around, you're putting some graphics, you'll be able to see those changes, but the rest of the world can't see them. Only after you publish all of those changes, what it does is it takes that draft copy and then it overwrites the live copy. So that now, those two copies will be in sync and everybody in the world will be able to see those changes. Now there's additional tabs here, so you see that there's a Pages tab, a Library tab, and a Site Information tab. So again, I'll come back to the Pages tab in a minute. The Library tab is where you're going to house all of the images that you might want to use on your website. In order to get a picture to display on your website, you need to get that picture from somewhere. You need to then upload it to the BNI Connect servers, and then it will be available to put onto your chapter website. A quick legal notice here, please be very careful about images that you use on your chapter website. There's a lot of images that are floating around on the internet that might have copyrights on them, so please don't take any images from other people's websites and just assume that it's okay to use them. Um, of course, if you're creating your own graphics, or these are your own photographs, or your own pictures, those are okay to use as well. 
But in order to get a graphic onto my website, again, I do have to upload it into the library. To do that, I would click on the Library tab, and I'm on the Images tab right now, and I click Upload. This will open up a window that allows us to upload photos to our web page. I click on the magnifying glass, and I go find the pictures that I'm looking for. So let's say I'd like this welcome image. I can click on that and click Upload. And now we can see this welcome image is on our, on, on our library to be able to be used. If I'd like to put some more documents up there, I click Upload again. Click on the magnifying glass. And let's say I'm going to go grab a couple of other images here. Let's say I'd like to use this uh, Get Connected, Stay Connected image and the BNI Connect support image and maybe the BNI Connect uh, logo here. You can multi-select by holding the control button down. Click Open and we'll see we have three images ready to be uploaded and it'll process all those images at once. So now I have these four images that will be made available to me in order to put those onto my chapter web page. You can do the same thing if you want to link documents uh, for people to download. You can put those up on the website as well as flash objects. The upload process is the same. To delete something, you put a check in the box and you can click the delete button. Now the Site Information tab is a little bit of back-end information about your web page. The first thing to keep in mind is that your chapter folder name, and that's really what comes after your regional website name, that is an automatically generated name. It's done by taking the name of your region and then the name of your chapter and stringing that all together and putting a bunch of dashes in between for the spaces. Now, that might be a mouthful if you're trying to tell people how to get to your website. You might want to make that a little bit more user-friendly. You can rename the folder name here to anything that you'd like it to be by just overwriting what's there. So if I take that out, I can then just put in, let's say I want this to be Frosty, Fro Frosty 5, or even Frosty and the number 5. So I can do that by typing in a new name. So that way, if I'm telling people to go to our website, I can say, okay, go to AntarcticReferrals.com forward slash Frosty5, as opposed to AntarcticReferrals.com forward slash Shiver dash Region dash Frosty dash 5. A lot easier to remember that way. The rest of this information on the page, some of it you can edit, some of it you can't. The site tagline, which is what appears up here underneath BNI Connect, uh, that cannot be edited. That is a um, branded slogan. There are buttons on the web pages as well. So if you notice, if I'm going to go to this page again, in the upper right-hand corner, there's three buttons here. One that takes you to your regional website, so that'll take me back to AntarcticReferrals.com. One that takes you to the BNI International site, or BNI.com. And one that takes you to the login page for the Members Only section of BNI Connect. So those can be renamed. However, I, before you rename them, I highly recommend that you speak with your regional office, your executive director, they may have some local branding standards that they would like to keep in place so that that element of the chapter website looks the same across chapters. There's also a visit this chapter button or link and that's up here in the upper left hand corner. This link allows a visitor to pre-register to visit an upcoming chapter meeting. And that's a great process in itself because it sends email reminders and notifications about that chapter visit. But you can rename this particular link as well. So if you don't want this to say visit chapter, you can have that say, you know, join us for a meeting or something like that. You can put that in there for text as well. If you'd like to use Google Analytics, you do have to have a separate um, analytics code or analytics account. They'll provide you with some JavaScript code that you can copy and paste in here and that way you can do analytics for your website.
Now, if you've made any changes to any of this information, be sure to click the Update button, and that will be updated. And you'll see now that our live URL has been changed from shiver-region-frosty-5 to antarcticreferrals.com slash frosty5. Now, for this change to take effect, I do have to click the Publish button. And now I'll be able to go to our new URL, AntarcticReferrals.com, Frosty5. All right, going back here to our list of pages, this will show us the different pages on our website that we have the access to go in and edit and change and um, change footers and headers and do all sorts of things with the various pages on our site. So the top level pages, we have our home page. We have our chapter members page. So again, we have our home page here. We have our chapter members page. We have under the chapter members pages, we have the member details, chapter details, and send message. So again, if I was to go to one of the members, we have our member details page. The chapter details page is accessed by clicking on the name of the chapter here, and this is the chapter details page. And then if this person enabled the sending of messages, there would be a send message button as well with its own page, similar to this page. And there are some modifications that you can make to that as well. There's also a gallery page. By default, the gallery is hidden. So you can choose to show this page if you'd like to. Now, the purpose of the gallery page is to be able to share a, you know, a photo gallery of your particular chapter. So if you have chapter events or if you have um, you know, after hours or things like that, and you'd like to almost have like a little blog about those chapter events, you can do that through the gallery. Let me show you one example of that. So if I, uh, there's a chapter out there, the Mill River BNI chapter. So I just did a Google search for that. Notice they, their chapter page actually appears number one in the Google rankings here. I can go to their page, and you can see that they changed their gallery to a chapter news page. So what they've done is they've created a gallery. They do a little blog about certain things within this chapter gallery. So that's an additional page that you can use. Enabling this page, I'd click Show. It says, am I sure I want to show this page? And if I choose Yes, what you'll notice is that once I enable that page, we'll see a new tab along the top. And the gallery does have its own special image library where you can create albums of images that you can put up on your page. There's also a news page, and that's its own special function. The news allows you to publish news events about your region. Now, the nice thing about the news is that members can post news items here without having Chapter Webmaster access, and that's done from the inside of the system. So I'm not going to touch upon that today, but if that's something that you'd like to learn more about, shoot an email to uh, support at bniconnect.com, and we can tell you more about the chapter news. Now, with each of these pages, you do have some options. So, for example, let's say that I don't want this to say home anymore. I'd like that to say something different. I can edit the name of that page. So, instead of home, maybe I want this to say about our chapter. I can click Submit. And on our regional page here, it still says home. But if I go to our preview site, what we should now see is that the page has been changed from, again, home to about our chapter. From home to about our chapter. And you can do the same thing with chapter members as well as the gallery page. If you don't want that to say gallery, and you want that to, for example, say you know, chapter blog or recent events or um, anything else you'd like to call that, you can change the name of that as well. 
Meta tags are an art form for SEO in and of itself, but you do have the ability to optimize this website by putting in descriptions and keywords and meta tags here. And we finally have the edit content. Edit content is really where we're going to go in and we're going to make the actual changes to the page itself. So if I click on edit content, one thing to notice is that this will open in a new window. So this is an, a whole new window. If you have a pop-up blocker enabled on your computer, so if you click that edit content and nothing happens, your pop-up blocker is likely blocking that window from opening up. So make some adjustments to your pop-up blocker to allow it from this site, and you'll be able to go into the edit page. Now this is the CMS editor. So this allows us to go through and make any changes here to the content of our website. You'll notice that on the left-hand side, it doesn't allow us to make any changes. And at the bottom of the page where it lists the speakers, we can't make any changes down there either. And that's because all of that is controlled by BNI Connect. So that's all information that's pulled automatically from the system. Now that's one of the big benefits of actually using a BNI Connect website. And that is that you don't have to update that information manually. So if you were to go out and you were to create your own chapter website just outside of BNI Connect, as, as some chapters have done, every time a new person comes into your chapter or somebody leaves your chapter, you have to manually go in and edit all of that information. If you wanted to do a speaker rotation up on that site, you'd have to manually edit all of that information on a weekly basis. BNI Connect makes it easier because it pulls that information automatically. So let's say that your chapter changes location and it's now meeting in a new place. That information is automatically updated on the website automatically. You can change this header up here. So if you'd like it to say something different than about our BNI chapter, you can type in your own text up here. For the most part, the editing that we're going to be doing is down in this middle section. And as you saw before, you can change it. If you'd like a little bit more space to work with, you can move this up and down. For those of you that may have a some website editing experience, you can directly edit the source code here. So if I click the source button, you can go in and do some traditional HTML coding. You can even code in another system if you're more familiar with another uh, content editor or HTML editor. You could do your editing in there and then copy and paste the source code into here if you'd like to. This is also a good way to make a backup of your content. So let's say I'm about to make a bunch of changes here and I'd like to be able to at some point maybe go back into the original form. The easiest thing to do is to hit control A to select all, copy the content, and then open up something like Notepad and just paste that in there and you can save that and be able to revert it back to a previous state. So making backups is a manual process and it's a good practice as well. There are some different content templates if you'd like to lay out uh, the page a little bit differently. You can change the layout here. The next set of buttons are some pretty standard text editing buttons or program buttons. You know, we do have an undo option, a redo option, we have cut, copy, and paste. Now you notice there's a couple of other paste options here. We have paste as plain text and paste from Word. If you're going to be populating your site with text from another source, um, such as if you're copying and pasting from an existing website or maybe you're copying and pasting from a Word document, when you do that, the CMS editor always tries to emulate whatever you know, bold and italics and font styles and fonts and to be completely honest, most websites don't have all of the back-end coding that something like a Microsoft Word would have. So it's usually better to just get the words but leave the content formatting out of it when you're putting it in. To do that you would basically do a paste from Word or a paste as plain text. 
So you would first copy it from the other site and then paste it in here and it would just put the words in as opposed to all the back-end coding. That'll make sure that it displays properly in browsers. So there's the find and replace options if you're doing a search to replace words on the site. Of course is also select all. And you can also remove formatting. So if you do bring something over and it's not looking right, you can this, for example, has some bold and things in it. If I want to revert that just back to plain text, I could remove the formatting on that. Up in the upper right-hand corner, there are a number of tools for working with forms. Um, I'm not going to get into the forms today. That is an advanced topic. But if you're familiar with working with forms on websites, this does give you the ability to generate forms. The next section if you'd like to view this in maximum size, you can do that. That's helpful when you're viewing the source code, although when you're viewing it here, the kind of messes up the WYSIWYG. But you can also have the um, superscript and subscript and things like that. The standard tools for formatting are all right here on the next line, so I can make things bold. I can put things in italic. I can underline things and I can even put a strike through if I need to. We have the ability to put in numbered lists and bulleted lists. You can put in block quotes as well and containers. If you'd like to, you can center justify things, you can write justify things, you can full justify things, just like you could in a standard document. The next set of tools more specifically deals with web design. The first tool allows you to link things. So you, this is most important when you want to link things to an external site. So let's say you want to to say, please visit the BNI HQ homepage. And you'd like the word BNI that if somebody clicks on it to go to BNI.com. First, I would highlight BNI. I would click the link button. And then I would type the URL that I want them to go to. So www.bni.com. And now, when somebody clicks BNI, it will take them to BNI.com. Now, that works in other ways as well. There's other types of links you can put. So I can say, email us for more info. And if I'd like that to start an email, when they click email, I could click the link button. And I change the link type to email. And it would start a new email message for them. The other thing you may want to do is to do things like put pictures on your site. You do that by clicking this picture image. Once you get here, click Browse Server, and that will bring you to your library. You'll notice that there's some stock photography up here for you, but if you'd like to put one of the graphics that you uploaded, let's say I want to put this welcome image, I could click that and insert that. To put another image in there, again, I could click Browse. And let's say I want this BNI Connect logo on there. You can change the size of it if you'd like to. And now I have an image on there. You can also link images so that they become buttons. And I could do that by highlighting it, clicking the Link button again. And let's say I want that to go to support.bniconnect.com. I click OK, and now if somebody clicks that, it will take them to the support site. There's some more options for changing the styles of things. You can also change, of course, the, the font, although Arial is the branded recommended font. I recommend using that as often as possible. But you can also change the sizes. You can change the background colors and the colors of the text. 
And when you're ready, when it's the way you want it to look, you can click the Save button. That'll save your changes. It'll give you a preview of that screen. You can close it. Now, if you'd like to see what it looks like before you make it live, click on the Preview URL. That'll take us to our preview site. We can see what it's going to look like to the general public. When you're sure it's the way that you want it to look, go back and hit Publish. The screen will go blue for a second while it's publishing, and as soon as that's done, you'll be able to see your site the way you want it to be. All right, we are at the bottom of the hour, so what I'd like to do is to open this up for any questions. While you're thinking of any questions, um, I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. If anybody does need to leave right away, just a reminder that this whole webinar, including any upcoming questions, is being recorded. You can get to it from the support site. Again, from any page, just click this question mark, and that will take you to the support site and look in the, in the recorded webinars section. You can also find this recording. It will be made available at youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. I would also love it if you gave us a like up on facebook.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. We do webinar announcements and reminders and tips and tricks and all sorts of things up here on our Facebook site. All right, I'd like to open it up for any questions. Does anybody have any questions today? All right, John asks, um, are there, can you add pages to your chapter website? Um, right now, John, unfortunately, you are limited to the number of pages that are here. Again, you do have that gallery page that you can use for, you can kind of multi-purpose that for your own uses. Um, but other than that, we just have access to the pages that are available for now. So thank you for asking. All right, it doesn't look like there's any additional questions. All right, again, thank you everybody for joining us today for the Chapter Websites webinar. A uh, good referral for me is if you found that this webinar was useful and you liked this format, please do recommend these webinars to your other chapter members. We do have a number of different topics that we have available on a monthly basis. So starting next month, we will have Building VCP with BNI Connect, and that's going to be on Wednesday, July 16th as well as a number of other topics throughout the month. So please do join us, and I look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Thank you, everyone, for being here, and have a wonderful day. Happy connecting.